you are separate. You understand? Because <laughs> you've done that thing that like, we've all seen, we've all watched, and to get to that level, mm-hmm. did, what, did, did you get the tattoo? It was like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I know it did. Yeah. You know, you mentioned there, Harry, about uh, how humble you are, Alice. And I, I've always got that impression from you, whether it's oh. like, you know, now in person or whenever I've seen you online or whatever. Do you think that's linked to like hard work? Because to, to compete, whether it's at Olympics or any championship or any tournament since you've been so young, it comes with such sacrifice. It comes with such um, daily grind. And I, I think that brings like a foundation of, of, I guess, humbleness with it, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Like you have to have that self-confidence and self-belief and know that you're good enough and like to stand up on the line next to all of these other amazing athletes. But you are your own worst critic at the same time. Like you are your biggest biggest critic, I should say. Like sometimes nothing's good enough, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you push yourself. You're always like, okay, now I need to get more of myself. I need mm. to do better. And I think with that comes this humble attitude where you are always looking inward. So you kind of focus on yourself a lot, but then realise that you have to... I'm trying to find the right words. Like, have to be... have to be better. Yeah. But keep that in yourself. Yeah. That no, makes that sense. Makes I'm sorry, that's just like... It's a no, bit all over the place. Yeah. No, for sure. And, like, you know, I've had friends when I was when I was younger never reached the, the levels of success, you know, athletically that you have. But, like, even just guys who've competed or guys and girls who've competed at like a local level, mm. like the, the amount of sacrifice, they'd always be missing out on cool like friendship activities or like getting up three hours earlier than me to, before school or yeah. whatever. Who was like the driving force in your life to, to, to push you? Was it yourself? Did you have like support elsewhere? Like who, where did that come from? Came from my mum a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was always in me, but sometimes that gets lost very easily, especially as you're saying all these sacrifices, all these things that you see your friends doing and you're like okay now I've got to be up at 4 30 to go swim so I can't really hang out with you tonight and um my mum was always the one getting up with me taking me swimming and it was kind of like a dual buy-in where she sacrificed so much time for me and not that I feel like I owed her anything but it's nice to know that I wasn't alone in that yeah. sense through all yeah. the things we were going through and obviously there were other athletes around but you, you kind of only realise that you think your situation is very unique, if that makes sense, because you're the only one. You can only see yourself doing it day to day. Yeah. Whereas other people are with you, but you don't see what they're doing back home. So, yeah, my mum getting up with me, um, there were so many times that I wanted to quit, that I wanted yeah. to, like, bail out and be like, no, nah, I'm actually really done with this. I'm over it. And she would just be like, okay, just take the night off swimming and see how you feel. And then I'd take the night off and I'd come back in. I'd be like, oh, I wish I'd gone training now. Like, yeah. I actually really wish I'd gone. And she was like, yeah, I know. But, like, you need to learn that for yourself, kind of. There are a lot of parents who try to make their children do um, do everything. And then it, they end up getting, like, the resistance of, like, a sling back where the child's like, no, actually, I'm completely yeah. done with it. So my mum found a really happy balance of keeping me interested and encouraging me but not pushing me at the same time. That's a really good way to do it. I think you're so right in that a lot of people will probably, like, force their kids to do, like all these different activities because they want them to like follow a specific path in life but yeah. definitely you know having that want to do it come from yourself instead mm-hmm. of someone else pushing you to do it probably really I don't works. know I'm going to force my kid to be American <laughs> Yeah, I want it to, to, to be 200cc Mario Kart champion. 200cc? No, okay. 200, no, for, for anybody who's watching this who maybe doesn't know your story, Alice, mm-hmm. like you've, you've accomplished history. So like the reason I'm, I'm, I'm asking these questions about like your upbringing and like how you got to that mm-hmm. level. 2020 Olympics, first black swimmer to represent Great Britain ever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> like, like, I, I, I just want to run that back just to just a little bit, because I imagine at some point you were just a kid watching the Olympics thinking, mm. I wonder if that could be me. What did it, what did it feel like to, to get there and then, you know, tick yeah. that incredible history box? It's surreal. Honestly, I, used, uh, I watched 2008 was the first Olympics I remember watching. And I just remember seeing it and thinking, oh, that's really cool, but it'll probably never be me because... Uh, you hear all these stories around what athletes do, what they sacrifice, the training they go through. And I didn't like swimming enough. I thought I didn't like swimming enough to push myself to that level. So I was watching it like, oh, that's really cool, but it's not going to be me. So like, I don't want to get too deep into it. But I just kind of kept going with it. Like, I'm very stubborn, naturally. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just thought, um, 
So at that point in 2008, I was at like a national level and I wanted to just try and make British champs. Yep. And so I just kept working and made British champs when I was like 15, made that and then was like, okay, I want to make European juniors. And then went the same competition at British champs, I made European juniors. And then I was like, okay, let's try and make world juniors. And then two years later, I made world juniors. And so it was just kind of like a... I just, I so never looked at the Olympics as the end that, goal. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, thinking. So was in like, that, in all that time, you never had like the end goal no, of getting to the Olympics. Yeah. You were just always looking forward to like the next the, competition yeah, you would get into. Exactly. I guess that probably then, not that it doesn't put a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on you, because you're obviously still putting some pressure on yourself to make those competitions that you wanted to be in. But it's probably a good thing not to have the overarching Much, goal yes. of like, I want to be in the Olympics mm-hmm. one day. Because otherwise you might have worn yourself out or scared yourself off of it, but... That's kind of cool. I was watching um, another interview and you said that you trained, you were training like eight times a week or something at one point, right? That's I don't think I've ever done anything eight times a week in my entire life apart from wake up, well, wake up eight times a week, possibly, <laughs> to be impressive. honest. Yeah. That means you I only one nap. Naps. Yeah, yeah. 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 Only one nap, though. That's not even a lot. I need my naps. <laughs> So you'd go like obviously training every day and then some days you'd go like morning and night. Yeah, so I started. I started seven times a week when I was 11. I moved up to eight times a week when I was about 13. And then I've been on nine times a week ever since. And I've done a few tens. But I see tens are too much for me. Um, Jesus yeah. Christ. That's it, a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Like I see, like I see some of the, what some of the girls do and what some of my competitors do. And I'm just like, I actually can't do that. Like, my yeah. mind starts to just be like, nah, you're done. Like, I can get the meters done in the pool. I can get it all done. Then I get home and, like, my mood just plummets yeah. I'm not really nice to be around if I'm being <laughs> completely honest so um it's fun it's, be, it's about finding that happy balance of okay this isn't making me happy so if we drop one session my happiness can go up and then I'll be a better athlete because of it it's 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 been a learning curve over the past couple of years to find that optimum yeah. which I think a lot of athletes do go through but sometimes coaches do just want to run back like this has worked for every other athlete mm-hmm. I've coached in this event so you're doing that and don't allow that individuality, but I'm very thankful that I'm at a place that does. Yeah, and to be forever known as an Olympian as well, like, it's mm. such an elite group, right? <laughs> yeah. it's like, cause I'm pretty sure... It sounds amazing. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you've got the Olympic tattoo as well. It's like a <laughs> rite of God. passage, yes. right? I was with Edge, uh, Anthony Joshua recently, I think he's got it as well, maybe? I think oh, he's got a tattoo, nice. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But I, I know that I've seen it on a lot of athletes where, like, it's... because. It, you are separate, you understand? Because <laughs> you've done that thing that like, we've all seen, we've all watched, and to get to that level, mm-hmm. did, what, did, did you get the tattoo? It was like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I know I did. Yeah. It was literally, I got off the plane from Tokyo on like a Monday morning and I had it booked for the Tuesday afternoon. Like, <laughs> oh, honestly, I was like, so this is the cool. first thing I'm doing. Like, I've been daydreaming about it like uh-huh. since I qualified, basically. Well, even before that, even when I knew that I was fully aiming towards the Olympics, I was like, I know where I'm getting it. I needed to figure out which side of my body I got it on. I got it on my left hip. So yep. you can only really see it when I'm in a swimming costume. But yeah, I'm re- yeah, I look down at it. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I did that. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. God, the, Is that the only tattoo you have? No, I've got two. I've got, oh, well, no, sorry, I've got three. I've got the Olympic rings. I've got a, a tribal symbol on my back, which means endurance. It's from like my mother's side of like her heritage. Nice. And then <laughs> the first tattoo I got when I was 18 was like, uh, 21 Pilots, their band logo. And it's <laughs> it's on my right hip. I love that. <laughs> That's cool. Really That's amazing. <laughs>